Hey family, welcome to Victory Outreach Cape Town. And boy, we really missed a lot of you, but how many know that we're a family? We're a family, we're a people you call family and a place you call home. And if you're tuning in for the first time, we want to welcome you to our broadcast here at Victory Outreach Cape Town. And listen, today we have a powerful message. But what I like to do right now is just open up our service in a quick word of prayer. And if you have needs today, I want you to bow your heads and lift your hands. And we're going to offer up this service and all of your needs unto the Lord. Father, I come before you. I thank you for this time that we're able to gather together. And so I pray for every person that's viewing. I pray right now that your power will touch them today, that you'll speak to them and let them know they're called by you. So God, we ask you to bless this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, enjoy the service, guys. We love you. Have a great, great time.
What a powerful time in worship. At this time, we want to also worship the Lord in the area of our giving. And I want to encourage you uh, through a verse here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. It says here, Now may he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. And today I want to encourage you as you're preparing to give today and all of our details, our online details are right there in the link. You can click on. It's an easy, convenient way to give. But I want to let you know that your giving is bringing increase. Do you know that we're continuing to reach many souls through our online broadcasts? Many people are still getting discipled through our life groups. They're meeting online via phone calls. There's many Zoom meetings going on. And your giving is making all that happen. So I want to encourage you to continually be faithful because God is a debtor to no man. And so what I'd like to do today as you're preparing your giving as a family is I want to pray a blessing over your giving. So why don't you bow your heads with me as we lift it unto the Lord. Father, I come before you and I lift up every giver today, God. Lord, I pray for the tithe and the offering, God. I ask you to bless it and multiply it. We know that ministry is still moving forward, God, even though our church is a little bit different now and we're doing a lot of things online, but souls are still getting saved. People are still getting ministered to and disciples are raising up. So God, I ask you to bless the giving, bless the seeds, that are sown into the ministry. God, we pray that you begin to multiply it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, listen, thank you for your giving. I pray that you enjoy the service. God bless you. Hello, Victory Arch family. It's good to welcome all of you today and thank you all for joining us online, wherever you are, in your homes, there on your couch, in your living room, wherever you are. We just want to thank you and welcome you for joining us today. And just today I have a word that God has placed in my heart and I would like to share with you and I pray you'll be blessed today at the end of this message that God would have encouraged you and that you will get to see the power in the name of Jesus. If you have your Bibles, pick it up with me and let's go to the book of 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 8 to 10 and then we're going to read verse 17 to 26 and also verse 32 to 37, 2 Kings in chapter 4, from verse 8. The Bible reads, And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned him thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh that he shall turn him in thither. From verse 17, the Bible goes, And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. When the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he said to his father, my head and my head. And he said to a lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Mm. And she went out, went up, and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door upon him, and went out. She came, called unto her husband, and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men, and one of these assets, that I may run to the man of God. How many of you know, when times of trouble, we need to know where to run to? And come again, she said. And he said, Wherefore, we thou go to him today? It is not it is neither new moon nor a serpent. And she said, it shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, drive and go forward and slack not thy riding for me except I beat thee. So she went up and came unto the man of God and to Mount Camel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi his servant, behold, yonder is the Shunammite woman. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. 
And when Elisha came into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon the bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hand and stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child, look at this, sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes and he called Gehazi and said call the Shunammite so he called her and when she was coming unto him he said take up thy son then she went in and fell at his feet at his feet sorry and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went let's pray father we thank you we bless your name we give you praise and glory for who you are bless your word as we preach it today in Jesus name and I pray you right there in your room you can say amen i can really hear you now look at this this is a story of a woman who had a need in her life this is a story of a woman who was grieved in her spirit she was a woman look at some of the qualities she was she was grieving in her spirit she had an emptiness this was a woman who knew what it meant to give to a man of god this was a woman that that, that liked to show some kind of kindness to the man she was a woman that had a genuine need like most of you you and i even right here listening to me and watching me you have a need she was not only a woman that had a need but she was a woman that had a sincere concern for the man of God. She was sensitive to the need of the things of God. She had a positive spirit and it was a positive spirit that made her have a spirit of a positive confession. How many of you know it's important what we speak about, what we confess during the times of trouble, especially the season that we're in right now. Now I want you to know these things, ladies and gentlemen, that she had accepted her situation of not having a child as fate. Sometimes when you go through things, even in the season we're in right now, you can get to a point where you begin to accept it as your fate. Oh, this is how it's going to be. I have no way out. This is what is going to happen. Nothing will change. Nothing will stop. But how many of you know the devil is a liar? She never allowed her situation to completely kill her fate. Another thing I wanted to note is that she knew exactly where to run to in the times of distress. I, I don't know about you, but you can run to the government. You can run to friends. You can run to father. You can run to mother. But the Bible says we should look up to the hills. Uh, from whence come in our help? From our help comes from God Almighty, who is the creator of heaven and earth. You have got to know where to run to in the times of trouble, in the times of distress, in the times that we're in. Now, despite the the death situation she made a positive confession i love this part now i want you to know right there if you can hear the sound of my voice that confession brings possession what you confess you position yourself to accede to receive and to accept you cannot possess what you're not ready to confess into your life but if you can confess the word of god over your family over your children over your career in spite of what you might be going through my god is able to bring your confessions to reality and that decree shall be so in the name of Jesus, uh, you should shout amen right there in your house, in your living room. Now, something else she did, she knew how to get along with God. When the prophet came to the house, he did a few specific things. The prophet picked up the child, walked into the room, and he was able to shut the door behind him. He shut away the negative voices. He shut away all the things that will bring about pain, the things that will bring about doubt. And he went in there, and the Bible says that he laid upon the child, put his mouth on the child's mouth, his eyes upon the child's mouth, and his hands upon the child's hands and what happened was that he he was able to speak for it. he was able to confess and i see there why will he lay upon the child's mouth upon the child's eye and upon the child's hand those are very important things you must know number one he wanted to bring about the voice of the child your mouth is where lies your voice and when you go through things the devil tries to close your mouth and shut your mouth even the season that we're in that many of you might be losing faith you're not confessing the word of god no more you think the enemy has come this virus this thing that is running wild but we cannot lose our voice in the midst of the situation more than 
ever before. This is your time to open up your mouth and confess the word of God. Secondly, was the eyes that he laid his eyes upon the child's eye. And that is to restore the child's vision. You must know who you look up to. Your mind, your eyes have got to be fixed upon Jesus. In the midst of the pain, left, right, and center, it's chaos. All over social media, this is what you hear. This is what you see. The numbers of death or infections are before us. But we can never take our eyes off of the eyes of God. That's why he put his eyes upon the child's eye. And thirdly, he stretched his hands upon the child's hand. What does your hand signify? Your hand signifies productivity and power. If the enemy can tie your hand, he renders you productive, uh, he renders you unproductive or improductive. I don't even know what exactly that is no more. When the enemy ties your hand, he stops you from being able to feed. He reduces the power from you, but the devil is a liar. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of sound mind. You have got to stretch out your hand to God who owns the power in his hand. And so when the man of God came, laid his eyes, eyes to eye, uh, mouth to mouth, he brought back his voice. Uh, he said, the devil cannot steal your voice. Uh, and I prophesied to you under the sound of my voice. Uh, no devil of coronavirus will steal your voice. Uh, no devil of this COVID-19. I don't care how loud they're speaking. Nothing speaks uh, louder than the voice of the blood of Jesus. Uh, secondly was his vision. Your eyes has to keep stayed upon Jesus. For the Bible says, he keeps in perfect peace those whose eyes are stayed upon him. Oh, and the Bible tells me that when he came into the house, he, he laid upon the child a second time, and the child sneezed seven times. If the child sneezed, what is a sneeze, you will ask me? A sneeze is, is another word for a sneeze is uh, stannutation. And it is a semi-autonomous convulsive expulsion of air from the lungs through the nose and the mouth, usually caused by a foreign particle irritating the nasa of the mucosa, which is your nose, your, your, your nasa uh, uh, elements. Now, the function of sneezing is to expel mucus containing foreign particles or irritants and cleanse the nasal cavity. Now, let me announce to you that God is about to blot it out. I know this virus comes from droplets. They told us it travels from droplets, gets into you, causes you to call, causes you to sneeze, it gets into your lung, all of that. But the same way it happened for this child, I'm here to declare to you, is about to happen in your house. It's about to happen in South Africa. It's about to happen in America. It's about to happen in Italy. God is going to blot it out. Look at someone next to you where you are and say, there's about to be a sneezing. You are about to sneeze. And I'm not talking about the COVID-19 kind of sneeze. I'm talking about the sneeze that will blot out every infection, every rotation in your blood, every rotation in your system, everything that has caused you to lose your human functions, uh, there's about to be a sneeze uh, in your life. Come on and shout amen right where you are. I say shout amen right where you are. Now, you must understand that the Bible said that he sneezed seven times. What does seven represent? Seven is the number of completion. Seven is a number of completion, and I come to announce to you that what that means is that it's about to be a total restoration. Say it with me, say it with me, say total restoration. Yeah, I want to hear you right there. Open up your mouth and say total restoration. God is about to restore everything that the enemy has stolen from nations, from countries. God is about to restore. God is about to restore a thousand folds beyond. Health is about to be restored. Businesses will be restored. Your mind will be restored. Your lost hopes will be restored. And I don't care what this thing might say, but nothing is stronger than the word of God. For the efficacy of the word of God can never be put out. There's about to be a restoration. There's about to be a restoration. There's about to be a restoration. The economies are shutting down. The nations are shutting down. The airports are shutting down. All the borders and, and port of entries are shutting down. 
But when the time when the government and things shuts down, God is about to shut down this disease uh, from China to Italy, from America to Africa, wherever it is, uh, God is about to shut it down. And I hear to decree and declare there's about to be a restoration. That's why that boy has to sneeze. Uh, he sneezed to blot out everything that has caused irritation. And I speak to everything that is irritating our government, everything that is irritating the sanctity of human life. COVID-19, I prophesy over you, back to the pit of hell where you come from. God's people are about to rise up out of this deepest place of darkness because there's about to be a restoration. It's all coming back. It will come back. There's nothing we're going to lose in this time that will not come back to us because our God is a God of restoration. Now, I want you to remember, dear friends, right there, that her confession provoked a miracle. The miracle you require has something to do with what comes out of your mouth. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, what's in your heart will come out of your mouth. What you confess is a direct reflection of what is in your heart. So you better be careful what you're saying. You better be careful what you're confessing. You better be careful what you're prophesying. For the Bible says Life and death lies in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Her confession brought about a miracle. That miracle that we desire. You want a miracle in your home. You want a miracle in South Africa. We want a miracle all over the world. The whole world is panicking. It's time for us, you and I, believers, Christians, family, whether you are an unbeliever, open your mouth and begin to confess that this too shall pass. It is well. Because that is what happened to her when she came to the prophet. The prophet said to her, what is wrong with your husband? Is everything okay with your child? Is everything okay with your marriage? What did she say? She never told him the child was dead. She never told him the boy was lying in the room dead. She said, it is well. And I stand here today as a servant of the Most High. I decree and declare it is well with you. It is well with your marriage. It is well with your children. It is well with your family. It is well with South Africa. It is well with America. It is well with Italy. It is well with the UK. It is well with Iran. It is well with South Korea. It is well with you. I mean you. I mean you. Put your right hand on your forehead and say, it is well with me. It is well with my household. It is well with my family. This is a time that we can begin to confess positive because your confession brings possession. How words, her confession provoked a miracle. Instead of speaking the negativity, now I'm not against getting informed, get all the information you need about this COVID-19. But after you've got that information, what needs to come out of your mouth? It's the word of God. For when God in Genesis looked at the whole earth, the Bible said the earth was void and formless and darkness was upon the face of the earth. What that tells me is that God did not like the situation he saw, but what he wanted, he began to prophesy. He said, let there be light. I don't want darkness. He spoke what he wanted to see. Now is the time for you to begin to speak what you want to say. Speak hope. Speak faith. Prophesy over our nation. Prophesy over your family. Prophesy against this madness called COVID-19. Nothing shall overcome the word of God. It's not the word of God in my mouth that will save you, but it is the word of God in your mouth that will save you. And I'll come to announce to you, my dear brothers and sisters, what are you saying? What are you declaring? What are you confessing? That song says, Whatever my Lord, he has taught me to say, it is well, and it is well with my soul. And I come to let you know, it is well with you. It is well with your soul. It is well with your children. I'm so excited. I'm so happy because I know that when this is all over, God's going to get the glory. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that? God is going to get the glory. I want you to take the next 30 seconds right where you are in that room. Wherever you're watching me from, clap your hands and give God a praise. And say, God, hey, come on, clap right now. He can hear you. He can see you. He can watch you right there. God is going to get the glory. Away with the despair, away with the pain, away with the shame. Because our God is going to turn it around. The same way he raised up that child. 
He's going to raise our nation up. He's going to raise you up. He's going to turn this whole thing around and it will be for his honor and for his glory. But it is well. I'm going to pray for you right now, right where you are. And I want you to, you can stand where you are. You, you can just, just some of you, if you want, you can kneel. If you want, you can stand or you can stretch your hand to the television or whatever you're watching me from on your iPad, on your phone, your tablet, whatever device you're using. Our God is not limited. So wherever he can move, he lives and bound. He moves through the air. He moves through the wind. He moves through the ocean. He moves through every element. Stretch your hand towards the TV or you can take your right hand, place it upon your forehead and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone right now that is watching. Wherever they are, across globe, across countries, across continent, oh God, male or female, man or woman, young or old, wherever they are, we come before you right now and we decree and declare it is well in the midst of this pandemonium in the midst of this pandemic in the midst of this global score that the world has no answer to nothing surprises you I know you have an answer to it and therefore today we refuse to speak fear we respect to speak uh, consternation we respect to speak pains that will dampen our spirit uh, we pronounce faith uh, we pronounce joy we pronounce hope and we decree and declare it is well with nations uh, it is well with that man or that woman watching me right now it is well with our countries and the countries of the world it is well with our government and the people in authority and we know that you are a God you are a good God if you can raise that boy back to life then this sickness is nothing to you do it and let your name be glorified we well, thank you, we love you, we praise and we worship you it's in Jesus name I pray and if you believe that God has answered you I want you to jump up, rejoice clap your hands and celebrate our God because he's worthy the Lord bless you until I come you where again it is well We pray that the Word of God really ministered to you today. Wasn't it powerful? And listen, I want to encourage you to uh, apply that Word that we heard because it's going to make you stronger. You're going to have more joy, more peace. And so listen, uh, if this really blessed you, I want to encourage you to share it with somebody. You can start a watch party and invite your friends and family. And also uh, check out our website. You know, it's powerful content. You can see some of our different services that we've had. And so we love you. And also, if you want to join us in our online giving, you can see all that information on our website. We're praying for you. We love your family. See you soon. To make a payment via online giving, you need to firstly contact your local bank to activate your bank card for online payments. Go to Victory Outreach Cape Town website, vocapetown.net, and choose the giving option. Scroll down and choose your giving option. If you are giving from South Africa, click the red Pay Fast tab on the left. Choose your giving type, put in your amount, which will reflect in Rand. Enter your full name, email and phone number. Click on the Give Now tab. Regardless of your card type, click on the first tab option, Credit and Check Card. Fill in your email address and bank card details and click Pay. You will receive an email notification showing that your payments has been made successfully. Thank you for continuing to partner with us through your giving and may God continually bless you.